This video was made possible through a grant from the Haas Corporation. The Geek Group would like to thank Haas for their continued support in helping encourage innovation in design and manufacturing in America. The Geek Group proudly features ISCAR tooling in all of our workshops, videos, and hackerspaces around the globe. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Iskar Rick. Welcome to the Geek Group, where today we're talking about programs. Lots of programs. Well, program navigation. Program navigation. Okay. This is huge. This is, yeah, this, this is, is an everyday thing. This. Yep. All right. So there's a lot to it, too. This is, we've, we've just done a bunch of easy videos. Right. This one's going to be like, there's some meat to this. Yeah, oh yeah. All right, take us through. Okay. And when you go to memory, this will give you your program that's active, that's in the machine. Okay. And it's ready to read this program. We go to the program list, and this will list all the programs that are in the memory. Now, is this the memory, like, in the machine's memory? In the machine's memory. No, in or? the machine's memory. Okay. This is in the memory. We have a USB, we have a hard drive, and we have an Ethernet. Okay. Okay? So, in, right now in the memory, we have this many programs. Okay. You can have lots of programs. We have lots of room. We've got 14 megabyte free. 97% of the, the hard drive in this thing is open. Well, that's not, that's, that's not the hard drive, but that's, that's the active RAM. Active, okay. Okay. All right, what it, all that computer talk. This computer talk matters because in the memory is, is it's just memory, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's RAM. And in this instance, if you turn the machine off and come back on, these are still here. Now, normally, like in your computer at home, you have the hard drive, and anything that your computer knows after you've turned it off and back okay. on, that's on the hard drive. Right. So when you save a program, sure. it writes it to the hard drive. This is different. This doesn't work that way because these programs, uh, they're, they're stored on a hard drive somewhere, but it isn't treating it like that. Okay. Okay, this is non-volatile memory. This is the active program. Right. So this program is in memory, but it's in, it's in memory in a different way than these programs. Okay. So you can store programs on the thumb drive, yes. in the hard drive, on a network share, I mean, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of different ways to do it. So okay. it can get pretty complicated really oh, yeah. fast. And, but like 14 megabytes in this world, yep. huge amount of memory. Right. In, in the computer, computer stuff, world, 14 it's megabytes, that's, that's an MP3 it's in your phone. file. Right. Yeah, that, that's nothing. So how do we move these around? As you move these around. So we have, as you move this down, if you want to activate a, spindle, activate a, um, a program, we want to activate this program right here. All you do is just select this program. Okay. That's it. This and one, now this changes. This is the program. That's the program. Okay. So this is if we hit green go, well, we're it would cut run that. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Now if we page up from there, we, in memory we can move over to our USB device, which is over here. Okay. And we cursor down from there. This is the information. This is everything that's on that USB. And if okay. you had pictures or whatever, they would come up and it would say JPEG or whatever. Okay. It'll show what's on it. Even files that it can't read, it'll exactly it just because it's reading this. Okay. So. In the file. So if we want, let's say this uh, small star, and see, we want this one. We select this one, okay? Then we can take and we move up, page up, page up. We cursor over. And now we're in memory. We're now we're in memory. We're going to bring it over, cursor down, and if you read this, F2 to copy. And we hit F2. And it's going to overwrite uh, this particular program. Uh, we don't want to overwrite this one. We can overwrite another one. Okay. All right, since we've called it this program. Now, why is... Oh, it's because it's the same name. That's because correct. Because the program you selected was already this, in memory. That's right. right. Okay. Do you want to override it and say, yes, I do? And, and we... Well, we and, might not want... We might not have wanted to do that because that was actually a program that somebody... No, we using. overwrote the one that I just put in there prior to shoot this video. Ah, okay. That's okay. good. I was worried there for right. him. I'm like, hang on. He might have needed that. Mm -hmm. That's one of Mike's programs. Right. So, and you call them over, you'll see if you bring files in, all programs are going to have a, a, a number up here in the program. All right, this number here is what we're looking for. This first character is the letter O. It's not the number zero. It's not the number zero. Okay. And you can have Why up o? to five. I don't know, somebody back in the, back when I was young, decided that this is the way it should be. And now it's like that on all the machines. Yeah, just about all of them. Like, I don't know of any of that are different. A bunch of different manufacturers, manufacturers use the and, same thing. Yep, that's it. Now, I see after O, it's just a number. It's just a number. But it's always, it's a five-digit number. It's, it can be a five-digit number. It can be a four-digit number. You can have just one, but it'll be a whole bunch of zeros and a one. Okay. So whatever you've got within five digits. Okay. It doesn't matter. 
Okay. And so then you won't have two programs with the same program number. So they always have to be different. They always have to be different in the machine. But, so this is a thing that predates like program names. Like now this, this program is called Small Stars. Right. You can't just, the name isn't enough. It has to have, to have a number. the program number for the machine to read it to drive the servos. Okay. It has to go to, and it has to go to code. Okay, so, right. but when you're designing this, when you're doing this in MasterCam or mm -hmm. whatever, does it get the number automatically? Yeah, MasterCam will, will, will automatically put the number in there. Okay. On a, on a random number, and you can edit that before you send it to the machine. To, just in case you have one that's already It's something up. different. You know, we could, be making, we could be making the block op one, op two, op three, and you could call op one, zero, you know, the letter O, zero, zero, one. And then second op, we could call zero, or letter O, zero, zero, two. Okay. All right, and this way you can distinguish between them. Okay. Okay. What else do we need to know? Let's say that you want to copy this program. You want to copy this program because this is what came off of your master cam, but you want to make a few edits, but you really don't want to mess with your original one. So okay. you can make a copy of it so you can have something to play with. So but you, you just, always you copy the program with a different name. With a different name. You can change it all you want. You can always go sure, back. Sure, it's real okay. easy. So we just do, we do the letter O, and this one is uh, 1,005. We'll call it 1,006. Okay. All right. And then F2, and there it is. There it is. Okay. And now you can load easy. this into memory. It is in the memory. We did that in the memory. Okay. So, and you can copy this. Now, how, how do you make this the program that's here? It's, it's, oh, it is it, already. It, it already it is. is. Okay. So you can go through here, do all your tweaks, tweaks and changes, and, and if you really screw it up, you can go can back and you go cool. back to the beginning. Or if you like it, then when you're done, you can take and you can save this back to your USB and then put it in your big file system someplace and save it. The program's already selected. We hit F2, save to USB device, write, and write again, and here we go. Excellent. And then, oh. We, we want to overwrite this one, yes, because that was the original one that we our brought happy over. Green bar. And okay. our happy green bar, and we're done. All right, so that's everything you need to know. We've, we've loaded the file in, we've, we've edited it, we've sent it back. That's everything. It's good file management. Okay, so that's all the basics for files. Yes. All right. So I'm Chris Bowden. I'm Miss Car Rick. And as always, We'll see you next time. This video was made possible in part by Mastercam, whose CAD CAM software provides the base to all code generated for Geek Group CNC projects. The Geek Group would like to extend our deepest gratitude to the Gene Haas Foundation for making this program possible. Thanks to their generous contribution, we are able to train and inspire machinists all around the globe. Operating the CNC machines in this video risks personal injury and mechanical damage. Hazards may include electricity, untrained operation, airborne toxins, flying debris and noise, fire and explosions, poor shop upkeep, sharp tooling, projectiles, loose clothing, inadequate clamping, automatic operation, automatic tool changer, unsupported bar, over-tightened steady rest, lack of enclosure, and impact. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.